All right, this is a RAV G120, uh, though I'm sure the procedure is the same for the majority of these things. Uh, first of all, disassembly, you're going to have to remove, you might have a bracket up here, maybe not. Uh, your slide ruler, usually there's an Allen key at the end, you can remove that. On this machine, there was a couple of screws as well. So on the back, there was a screw, where was it? Eh, there, screw there, screw on the other side as well somewhere. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, there was one over there as well. Uh, obviously, unplug it, turn the power off, and then shake and shimmy the top off. When you remove the top, it'll look something like this. Uh, I'm going to, let me actually unclip the top and I'll show you what everything is and does. Give me one second. Okay, now I've got the lid off. And my apologies that it's dirty and messy. This is a home shop. It's not a it's not a shop where uh, customers really come, so it's going to be a little dirty. All right, first things first, you've got your control board back there. Uh, and I, Well, actually, you've got your control interface up here. That's the brains of the unit. The brains then trigger mechanical relays and uh, and transistors in there, which will drive and stop the motor. If your balancer is running poorly, if you notice that uh, it's running slow or sticky, most likely it's gonna be your motor. So you can actually remove the motor. There's usually a couple bolts underneath that allows you to slide it forward, take off the belt, and you can lubricate with some three-in-one or whatever, both the rear as well as the front bearing. So just some three in one, couple drops, spin it both ways several times and should be good to go. The belts on these things, you'll have to measure your belt. They wear out quite frequently. I'm waiting for a new belt to come in because mine is extremely worn as you can see. So I'm getting a new belt and it should be in shortly as well. Uh, you've got some piezo ceramics, kind of hard to see. There's one extremely dirty, and then there's gonna be the other one deep down there, hard to see. Those are what are actually measuring any minute deflections with the tire. That's how it detects the balance. So any uh, deflection in any of those bolts that are touching the, sh the, the shaft will translate into voltage differences. So again, those are piezo ceramics. Those voltage differences get sent back to the machine in one of these wires. You also have your position. Uh, so you've got a magnetic wheel on here. You can see all the magnets in it. You've got a reader right up here, and that reader will tell you exactly where in position you are. And that again feeds back to one of these lines. And then you've got the switching units. Now I can remove this so that everyone can see. So I wanted to show everyone the schematics on mine just in case you need them. Uh, there we go. Kind of hard to see, but I'll try to answer it as best I can by taking out the control box. So you've got two transformers. One outputs 30 volts. The other one outputs, let's see, what does this output here? Uh, nine volts. Uh, so when you, when you press the buttons on your control board, which is down there, I've taken it off, it sends um, it sends the, the signal to this microprocessor here, which in turn uh, opens or closes one of the transistors. Uh, my electrical knowledge, by the way, is, is minimal, <laughs> but uh, you've got both a run and a break. So just so that everyone knows, when you press start on the machine, it'll run the, uh, the wheel, spin the wheel, It'll then click off and allow it to free spin while it's measuring the deflection. And then once it's measured the deflection, it will apply the brake. And essentially the brake turns this thing into an alternator for a little bit, and it needs to burn off some of that energy that it's, that it's taking. But that also slows down the wheel, again, acting as a brake. So the on circuit, at least in mine, uh, doo -doo -doo. this one is the on relay right here, the one that I'm touching along with this transistor here. So that transistor and this relay, and correspondingly that diode is the on. And I, I actually, I swapped the transistors. There's supposed to be a transistor in here. I removed that because it was dead. It had burnt out <clears throat> and it also burnt out my, um, my relay there as well. So 
obviously this one is the brake relay. So if something happens and it generates too much power, it likely will burn out or screw up your transistor. It'll fry the coil. The coil actually measured okay, but then when I put it on the bench and tap six volts to it, these are six volt uh, relays, it, it wasn't always switching. So the coil has an issue and I've, I've opened it up and I've taken a look at it and there is some burning on it. So, uh, and then <clears throat> because it generates, it, it opens up, allows the motor to start braking, which generates electricity. It feeds it into this 70 volt, 70 volt transformer to burn off some of that energy. So that's, and then the, the cap softens it as well. So it doesn't just flow in there lickety split, <clears throat> but that's how this works. Yours is likely the same. There's a couple fuses in there. Uh, they protect some of the inbound current from the transformer initially, though there's the components will blow before the fuses blow. So I don't really know why they put those fuses in, but that's it. Balancers are pretty simple. It's just your input board. And, and this, by the way, has your processor on it. So before doing anything, if you want, you can buy readers for these and you can copy them. Uh, save it to a file on your computer so then you've got a copy of that just in case something screws up on the board because these boards are they're easy to fix except for that guy there if you lose the data on that you're kind of pooched so definitely back that up if you're able to again you can buy a reader for it um they're, they're you know eprom readers or whatever plug it in save the data off of it to a file so you can rewrite it if need be so these are pretty simple uh on mine i've got i've got the the wheel encoder, the position sensor of, of where it is. This is for the hood. So if you open or close the hood. Um, this one is the piezo ceramics, so the actual deflection. And then this is power and signal for the board. I think it's a plus five, minus five, uh, ground, ground, something, something. I forgot. I, I measured it with a multimeter, so... Uh, and I had a, a friend as well come over and give me a hand with it. So uh, anyway, pretty simple stuff. There you go. If you ever need to, to fix them, now you kind of have a better idea of how they work. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. These components are relatively cheap. Some of them you have to look for the, the comparables because uh, if you look up the exact model number, they might be discontinued. So obviously take a look and try to find comparables that have the same profile with the same same pin layout so that you can just solder and desolder in. Oh yeah, and there's also a bridge rectifier down there. If you do get some weird voltages coming through it or, or weird amperages, that guy might heat up. And uh, the diodes in mine test out okay, but they're all cheap, right? They're like two bucks, three bucks, three bucks. 20 cents 30 cents so if something were to happen you might as well replace the components if you can find them they're cheap enough the belts are a couple dollars a piece so easy peasy